All right, we're going to do another PL quick check. Uh, you hear me talk about all the time why you want to make sure that things are organized correctly in your profit and loss statement. Remember, our number one calculation, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. It's the way that you're going to structure your pricing to make sure that you always earn a profit, but it's also the flow of your profit and loss statement. Now, your profit and loss is only as clean as the numbers that you give it and the categories that you assign. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here at a cleaning company that it has a PNL, but it's very unorganized. It's organized, but it's not. All right, let me kind of explain. So what we're going to do is we have sales. Remember, sales minus cost of goods. So sales minus cost of goods minus expenses, even though you see the expenses up there, then you get some more expenses down here is going to work its way down to profit, which is called uh, net income when it comes to your profit and loss. But what you're going to notice is things get a little complicated in here. First off, if we look just at revenue, which is this section right above, you're going to have a lot of different things. You've got the contracts, sales discounts and adjustments, then net, and then other miscellaneous, and then interest, and then revenue, and then of ultimately they made this 27.7. So the, the number is really good. The 277 is awesome, but it's very confusing on one hand. Second, I also know that this particular cleaning company really wants to try to grow a certain piece of their cleaning business. So we'll say it's commercial in this particular case, it's a version of it, but there's no way to tell how much of this money is coming from commercial versus residential, which would be very helpful to her in growing this business. Uh, so we can definitely organize revenue a little bit better than what we have. Uh, and by the way, this is just changing the way that it's categorized. And a lot of times it's really simple in the system because you make the change once and it'll ask you, do you want to apply it to others? And uh, it's it's pretty simple. So let's take cost of goods. Cost of goods, as you recall, is anything that's used in the delivery of the product or the service and the labor associated with that. Everything else is a cost of doing business, which is an expense. But you're going to notice here that under our cost of goods sold, we have our wages and salaries, which is where it would be as a cleaning business. But we got EI expense, CPP expense, bonuses, expenses, a total payroll. So in this payroll, they're putting everything to do with payroll, including any of the operational expenses that would be tied to their payroll. And operational expenses would go down in expenses, whereas the payroll salaries themselves are what would be up here in cost of goods. You'll also notice that we have equipment, amortization, supplies, uniforms, meals, car rental, vehicles, uh, utilities, rent. None of this is a cost of goods. All of this are expenses to running the business. So cost of goods, she's not getting a true number. So when it says her cost of goods are 181 and 65.66%, she's not getting a true number as to what her actual cost of goods are because it's very convoluted with all this other stuff that doesn't belong there. Now, when we get down here to general expenses, these are true expenses that you would see on the majority of the P&Ls, but we also know that so much of it is lost up here that we're not getting a true number down here. So the reality is her expenses are not 4.3%. Uh, a lot of this stuff is correct, but like I said, the stuff from above needs to be down there. The other thing that's interesting that they have on hers is that her taxes are coming out before her profits. Uh, remember, you are taxed on the profits of your business. So they're obviously making an estimation as to what that would be. And they're saying that it's going to be about $19,000. And then they're saying this is what her net income is. And the reality is you should have the net income before taxes. And then you'll know, okay, off of that number, what do I need to set aside? Because more than likely, that's what I'm going to be taxed off of. Net income, your profit goes to three things, retained earnings, money you put back into the business, your taxes, and then what you take as an owner for your owner's draw on top of your salary. Now, here's what that same PL looks like with a little bit more reorganization, if you will. Now, I could have done the revenue a lot differently than what I did, but at minimum, I put in residential sales versus commercial sales. This way, she'll know each, especially when she starts comparing month after month and year after year, whoops, get off there, uh, if it's growing in the direction that she wants it to grow. Uh, you could have these other categories, but that's, I don't know what's in them. So they could be reclassified to make it a little bit easier to understand or one long thing. But at minimum, the sales should be broken into one, two, maybe three categories that you're trying to track. Uh, at the end of the day, 
PL is for you. Yes, your tax person is going to use it, do your taxes. But what they care about at this particular point is how much revenue did you take in? How much did you do in sales? So they can add up all these numbers or just go straight down here to the 277, which is the number they're going to use because they don't break out on your taxes, all this other junk um, that's in here. All right. So just make it the way it works. Now, cost of goods, we've really cleaned it up. You'll notice that we have the wages. You know, you can make a case for the bonuses and gifts, but I there was nothing there, so I didn't really worry about it. Um, so she's going to have her wages for doing it, and then she's going to have the supplies that she uses during the cleaning process. So her true cost of goods is 137 which is 49% versus the 63 that she had earlier. Then we turned around and moved everything else down here, uh, including that payroll stuff that she had extra. And when you look at your expenses, instead of being 4%, her true expenses is 20%, which is what you're going to see right here. And then we also came down and looked at her net income, which is almost 30%. So it's, it's a really good net income. And then from that, she's going to set aside for her taxes. And you're going to notice that she's setting aside basically 7% of her sales and 23% of her profit is she setting aside for her taxes. I just calculated that off of using the 83, just to give an idea, because most people set aside 25 to 30% for their taxes. And that's about what she's doing. But you can see that when you look at this version, it really follows that flow much better to where you get clean cost of goods and a clean expenses. And it's just, a, you know, they used to say back in the day, flick of the pen, it's really just a computer change where you change the categories and how you're doing it. And you can rearrange your PNL so that it's much easier for you to read. And this might have too much for you. You can have uh, the insurances all together because you can say general liability and you can have workers comp. If you have employees, you can do all kinds of different things. So just know that you can go into your PNL and you can make some changes and you can make it much easier for you to read. Once again, the goal is for you to read this and use the information. So sometimes you just have to do it.